Hello, football fans. Welcome back to Goal Side. Picture this. Paul Pogba sulking back to the dressing room while shaking his head. David De Gea applauding the fans with a look of disappointment on his face. Dejected Ole Gunnar Solskjaer carrying a frown, staring out into nothingness as he considers what went wrong. Wondering why you're being described this sad image? Well, mostly because this is practically what Manchester United have become in the last year. Although many claim that the rot has been setting in much longer than that. Victims of terrible transfer business, worse man management, a lack of direction in terms of identity, subpar tactics, and a serious need of humility when facing smaller sides. The most decorated club in England is at its worst point in years, decades even. The age of Sir Alex Ferguson is long gone, with the legendary manager having retired in 2013, and now, six years later, United look further than ever from recovering the glory days that they enjoyed for over 20 years under the Scotsman. But to get to the root of the problem and find a solution to the ailments that are ripping the club apart, it is necessary to identify all of these issues individually, as well as tackle them where possible. To begin, it is important to look at what is going on in the dressing room and on the pitch. It's important to look at the players. Manchester United has always been home to some of the best players in the world of football. Sir Bobby Charlton, George Best, Eric Cantona, David Beckham, even Cristiano Ronaldo himself. Legends have been created and developed at the club, with many of them going on to win countless individual honors, whether at United or elsewhere. And the club is well known for having one of the greatest academies in the world. But has this changed so much in so little time? Are United's current crop of players simply not good enough? Honestly, Manchester United's squad isn't as bad as many wish to make it seem. To start, one has to look at the experience among the more veteran players in the team, with several of them having won titles and cups across Europe. Paul Pogba, for example, is a World Cup and multiple Serie A winner, carrying the mantle as one of the best central midfielders in the world, with numbers of goals and assists surpassing those of other similar players at equally big clubs. David De Gea is another great name to mention, a goalkeeper often associated with sitting comfortably among the top three in the world. The Spaniard is known for his excellent abilities in one-on-one -on -one situations and long-range shot stopping. Even when he is at his worst form, he's known for pulling off incredible saves that are often considered superhuman by even the most hateful rivals. And what of new signings? Harry Maguire and Aaron Juan Basaka? Both Englishmen are known for their stellar seasons in 2018, with Juan Basaka having impressed Premier League fans with his incredible tackling ability and pace during the 2018-19 season, and Maguire having shown brightly during the 2018 World Cup and 2019 Nations League, adopting his new role in the English national team with great maturity and responsibility. Maybe the squad is suffering up front? Perhaps. This is where things get tougher, since United truly is lacking in goals more than anything else. Even before selling Romelu Lukaku and loaning out Alexis Sanchez both to Inter Milan, United were looking lightweight in the attacking department. New player Daniel James has slotted in quite nicely to the side, but neither he nor Anthony Marshall and Marcus Rashford, both also wingers, have the finishing ability or set-piece lethality to lead United to top four. The biggest issue with United in terms of goal scoring is that they lack a consistent striker since Robin Van Persie, Wayne Rooney, and Zlatan Ibrahimovic left the side taking plenty of goals with them as they departed. Opponents are now more confident to sit back and defend for 90 minutes, fully aware that United's front three will have too much trouble putting the ball into the net to care if they attack or not. It feels like the days of aforementioned Cantona, Rooney, and Van Persie, as well as other great strikers such as Van Nisselrooy, Berbatov, and Tevez are long gone. United's forwards are now more worried on being flashy and gaining likes on Instagram than learning how to score in a crowded box or maintaining a 100% penalty record. Because recently, even spot kicks seem to be a real issue for United's goal scorers, and it appears that nerves have taken hold of the dressing room when it's time to take a penalty. Still, is it a cruel assessment to claim that United's woes are due to their strikers not firing? Isn't it? Surely there must be fingers to point at the managers and all of the other coaches that came after Sir Alex. Truly, United hasn't been lucky with the managers they've hired, starting with the terrible appointment of David Moyes, a man out of his depth and clueless on everything related to fighting for a Premier League title. United lost or drew every single match against top six opposition with Moyes at the helm, and he lost the dressing room just two months after Sir Alex had won a Premier League title with the same squad. Even worse was his transfer business. Lacking proper support from United's board, he was only allowed to purchase Marueni Fellaini a mostly average player, and Juan Mata, who wasn't the solution at the time, and it ultimately cost him his job. Coming up next was Louis van Gaal, and a lot can be said about this particular choice of gaffer. Slightly outdated in his football style, van Gaal attempted to implement a rigid system of passing, serving little for the pacier plays that wanted to take the attack to the opposing team quickly. His record against the top six was incredible, unlike Moises, but he often suffered against smaller sides such as Swansea, who he lost against three times in a row, with the Welsh club scoring two goals to United's one in each fixture. 
Mourinho was hired as a fix to these managerial problems, brought into the team as an expert who had the experience in winning trophies in England. The board and staff at the club believed he was the right person to catapult United to greatness and begin winning domestic and European trophies as they'd grown accustomed to under Sir Alex. Despite two initial seasons in which he did decently, considering the competition the club was receiving from almost unstoppable Manchester City, it all ended badly when he lost the dressing room in late 2018 failed to continue getting the best form out of his players, led United down to sixth place and overall just lost his touch as a star manager. Clearly by now you'll have realized how serious the managerial situation is at the club and noticed that perhaps the players aren't exclusively to blame for what United is undergoing at this point in time. Even now, when Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is trying his hardest at the club, there seem to be failings in his ability to make a significant game-changing substitution during matches. And it could be said that he made the move to a club of United stature a bit too early into his career. Many fans claim that he wasn't allowed to choose his own players or purchase the ones he felt he needed, but it's clear that he has also failed to get the most of the ones that he has as well. That said, what else is behind the fall of Manchester United in the league and in Europe? Let's continue to the next biggest issue, the ownership and general management of the club. Boy, oh boy, is this a true problem United has been facing. Led by the Glazer family and executive chairman Edward Woodward, the Red Devils seem to have become a club that is slightly clueless in the transfer market, signing deals that are as confusing as they are harmful to the club, and more energy has been dedicated to scouting out new sponsorship deals than new players in much-needed positions. With an eye for money but little knowledge in terms of football, Van Gaal even pointed this out publicly after leaving his sacking. Ed Woodward is a businessman and little else, charged with improving a squad he knows little about and purchasing players he barely even watches. This, of course, is an enormous mistake. But still, most, if not all, of the issues happening at the club have been identified, and still the answers have not been provided. What does Manchester United need to get back to the top? What can give them the much-needed boost to return to fighting for the Premier League and the UEFA Champions League trophies? Starting with players, it's obvious that the club needs to start addressing troublesome positions. This whole, we have youngsters that can come through the ranks story has to end. Youngsters are amazing to have, but there's nothing quite like a player with experience to change the fate of a season. Look at Van Dyke at Liverpool or Bernardo Silva at City. Both recent buys, they helped transform their clubs entirely, providing incredible value and in helping their sides win trophies. If United can identify their own Van Dyke, which hopefully could be Harry Maguire, and purchase a midfielder and right winger in the winter transfer window, their luck could take a definite turn for the better. Furthermore, the current players in the squad need to be motivated and kept in line. Social media needs to be cut down a lot and players must focus on the game and on the team that is paying their wages. Enough scandals! As for managers, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer needs to be given a true opportunity of at least this season. After all, doubtful that he was truly provided all of the transfer targets he wanted, and this, as in the case of Marino, could prove costly. Allow the man to get accustomed to the players he does have and respect his decisions. Maybe then he will get his team back on track to winning matches. Maybe then he will get his team back on track to winning matches. Now, the problem with the owners is a more secretive and complicated one to tackle, and there is a little which can be said that can change their minds on how they do things. However, it must be said that Ed Woodward must be kept far from transfer business. Whether or not he can strike a good deal is great, but he's not a scout or football fan at all. All he knows is how to get lucrative sponsorships, and he's shown at every single transfer window. Get him out of transfers! Finally, we reach the point that many aren't talking about, a fact which applies to most of the fans at the club, whether in real life or on the internet. You who wait for any mistakes during matches to tweet things against specific players, who turn racist when a non-white player misses a penalty or gets a card, others who waste all of their energy bad-mouthing Solskjaer when they don't get the result they wanted, no matter what the score is. In fact, it's about time everybody stopped attacking the players and the manager and started looking further outwards for culprits. Woodward, the Glazers, most of Manchester United's problems lie there, and as the recent revolving door of managers has shown, it doesn't matter who's leading the team, they won't be backed enough to make a difference. Support the club, United fan, even if you hate the owners. Finally, we hope you like this video about Manchester United's woes and how they can solve them. As a massively historic English club, it should be in everybody's best interests in hoping they recover from this crisis and return to fighting at the top of the best league in the world. Perhaps it will provide us all with amazing memories for the future. Don't forget to watch our next video, and obviously, don't forget to subscribe! We'll see you soon with our next video right here on Goalside!